All right, welcome to Theory Thursdays. Um, this is where you're going to learn. I'm going to post the lessons for your music theory assignments, and I'm going to do a brief lecture form so that way you guys have some teaching to go off of it. Again, these theory assignments are due a week from their passed out. So this is going to come out on Thursday. So like Thursday as in the 27th. So they are then due the Thursday after the 27th. I don't know what day that is. That's a lot of math. We'll worry about that later. Okay? So this job, basically me here, I am just going to walk through some concepts with you that are going to be on your assignments. And then if you have any questions, uh, you can email me. Hopefully I'll put them here in the video so that way you can just go back to it. Also, with this being the first one, I don't know how this is going to work. So, with that in mind, I'm going to post this to Canvas as a video for you guys to watch it. Then, I'm going to post the assignment. In class, we are going to check to make sure that you can edit the PDF, which is the assignment. It's over here on my screen. You can edit the assignment and then be able to draw on it and fill in the questions. Okay? We're going to check that tomorrow. And that's one of the reasons why I wanted to kind of give you guys a week. Um, especially this is an easy concept, but we can iron out all the kinks and this is not going to be hard. Okay. For the majority of you. Also, I want to give you a week because if it is hard, you can ask questions. You can get other resources. You can ask me, you can ask your classmates, anything that you want to do. I want to make sure that you have enough time to be able to complete this assignment to the best of your abilities because I want you guys to be successful in this class, but I also want you guys to learn, okay? Just for a warning up front, don't cheat on these. There is a theory final at the end of the year in the spring. It's like your last thing for me. Um, I have to do it. So you can cheat your way through these, but it's better to practice this because you don't know what's gonna be on the final. And so it's best to just know everything that you can, okay? Again, but these concepts are rudimentary you probably know these concepts. You probably just didn't know how, how they are written down or what they were specifically. You probably know how to implement these or know how to read these. Again, just refreshing, just building on your musical knowledge that you have already or introducing new concepts to help you, okay? That's the point of this, all right? This isn't busy work, this is to help. Again, you got a week to do it. Ask any questions. We're gonna figure this out together and we're gonna work together. Okay, I'm here for you guys, and that's my commitment to you guys. Okay, so this first assignment is about the staff, and it's, it covers the treble clef. Don't worry, bass clef people, we'll cover the bass clef. And it's about the staff, the treble clef, the keyboard. Okay, why is it about the keyboard? Because when we get into scales and whole steps and half steps, you need to know the keyboard. The keyboard's over here. I'm gonna recommend that you get. There's a file on Canvas that's eight staff. It um, has a bunch of staffs on it that you can use. Also, have a picture of a piano. Have a picture of piano keys, okay? So that way you can use this. This, let's see, I have my bell sit right here. That's a better example than this because I can't draw to save my life. So I'm gonna use both this and this. There's, okay? So. Without any further ado, let's talk about the keyboard, okay? So right here, if you haven't seen a piano, it honestly just looks a lot like this. You have all of your keys that are on the bottom that are in a row that are all your natural notes. So A, B, C, D, E, F, G, natural are all of these notes. If you wanna get into enharmonics, we can have a different conversation. You know what I'm talking about. These notes up here, are your sharps and flats and where they're supposed to be. So, this is basically the introduction to the keyboard. This is what a keyboard looks like. This is kind of what a keyboard looks like. It just looks really bad, okay? It's got two, it's got two, and three, then two. And that's how you kind of tell where you are on a keyboard. There are groupings. So, whenever you see a grouping of two sharp keys, one, two, this is a bad example because this is cut off. Let me try that again. Whenever you see an example of two sharp keys, that's an example, this two. Here again, an octave apart, 
whenever you see a group of two, the one on the left side of the left one is C. The one in the middle of these two keys is D. The one on the right side of this right key is E. So anytime there's a grouping of two keys, the one on the left of the left is C, the one in the middle is D, the one on the right of the right is E. Okay? Now, in the groups of three, you have our groups of three here. The one to the left of the left one is F. The one to the right of the far of the one to the right of the far left one, but to the left of the middle one. I know I'm saying a lot of lefts and rights, is G. Now, the one to the, uh, the right of the middle one and the left of the right one, again, a lot of lefts and rights, stop this and rewind this if you need to catch up, is A, right of the middle, left of the right, is A. And the one to the right of the right is B, and the right to be is C. I'm assuming you guys all know, but if you don't, the musical alphabet is A, B, C, D, E, F, G, and then it automatically goes back to A. Okay, that's it. There's no H, unless you're German. If you know that reference again, I'm proud of you. And there's no I, and so on and so forth. Okay? So, once we hit A, B, C, D, E, F, G, and then we go back to A. So there are your notes. There are seven notes. Seven, seven notes. I can't count. I'm not good at counting, even though I'm a musician. Seven. There are seven notes in a musical language. Okay? Figure out the groupings. Have a copy of the keyboard. Okay? That's on the worksheet. Okay? When looking at the keyboard, there is traditionally the note that everything is centered around is middle C. Right now, for example, we're just going to say this. Right here is middle C. Why is it C? Good question. Remember the group of two? To the left of the left one is C. So, and we're just going to say this is middle C specifically. Okay? In terms of higher and lower, the stuff to... The left of middle C is going to be lower than the stuff on the right of middle C. I'll say it in another direction. The stuff to the right of middle C is higher than the stuff on the left of middle C. Right is higher, left is lower. Okay? Makes sense. Awesome. Okay, thanks. Double checking. Just making sure I have your assignments up next to me, so I'm just making sure that I'm covering all of the stuff for you. Just want to go over a couple more things here before I call it a day with you guys. I want to make sure you understand what a treble clef is. Okay? Your treble clef. I know not everybody is a treble clef instrument, but it's good for everybody to know. Your treble clef funky looking symbol. So, here's your treble clef. I think that's the best treble clef I've ever drawn. Just saying. This is a treble clef. This means that middle C is right here. This is where middle C is. Okay? So these are all the notes. This is the right side of the keyboard. This is the right side of this bell set where everything above middle C on this staff is higher, is the higher notes, okay? I'm even going to give you a little bit of extra. I know it's not on this assignment, but just so you know, because you guys can get a head start. I'm going to show you the bass clef. But first I have to draw five lines. The staff has five lines, by the way. Five of them. Remember that.
Okay, you all can see that okay. I know they are not as good as the first one. You know what? It's not as good. I don't like it. There. I like that one a lot better personally. Again, the staff has five lines. We're working on the bass clef, which is going to be all the notes below middle C, all of your lower notes. Okay? This is what the bass clef looks like. It's like a funky backwards, upside down, confused J. Okay? All the loads below middle C. Another thing to remember is that in terms of the letters, normally you read top to bottom, music is special. You go from A, and then you go up to G in terms of reading music. Okay? That's not relevant to what we're doing here. Okay, so, that was perfect. so, recap, treble clef, bass clef, middle C. Now, let's talk about the spacing, the spaces and the lines. Again, some of you know this, but whether or not you read treble, you're going to be, you're going to give, be given assignments on bass. And whether or not you read bass, you're going to be given assignments on how to read treble. And whether or not you play non-tonal percussion, i.e. snare and bass drum, you're going to be given assignments on both. So it's important to pay attention. Okay? Disclosure, disclaimer, out of the way. Middle C, treble clef, bass clef. Moving on. Your lines for your treble clef. This is how I was taught when I took piano when I was five. Every good boy deserves fudge. E, G, D, E, F. Every good boy deserves fudge. Now the spaces. F, A, C, E. Space. Let's talk about the bass clef now. A little free tip. Bottom. Acronym. Give Billy Dimes for Arcade. That's what I was taught. That's how I remember it. If you find something else on the internet, let me know. E, 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 F, A. Okay? And now for the spaces. All cows eat grass. A, C, E, G. Okay? Remember how we're seeing this go up? So we told, that's why we just went over that the alphabet goes up. In music. So if you put it together, we have G, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, A. Now, the top note of this staff and the bottom note of this staff are not tricky. If you really think about it, if this note is C and this line is A, what's in between A and C? What letter? It's B. It, it's B. Okay? A note right here. This is B. Same concept over here. 
what's between C, let me make sure we can rotate that as C, what's between C and E? A, B, C, huh, E. What is it? It's D. So, we now can go, and if you really want to know about this note, what's the letter above F? It's G. Okay? Didn't think about it. What's what comes before G? F. We'll talk more about ledger lines later and how the notes that are really, really, really high up and really, really, really low, what they mean. Okay? So, we now essentially have, we can go G, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C, D, E, F. And then you have G up here and you have F down there. Okay? That's the grand staff. That's how music is. Okay? So people that are trying to read bass clef and they only know treble clef, just know that whenever you're looking at a treble clef, what you're used to seeing as middle C being down here, when you're looking at a bass clef, know that middle C is up here and work backwards. My bass clef people, flip it. If you know in your bass clef that middle C is here and you're looking at a treble clef, know that middle C is now below. Okay? The music is connected. People have told me before that, oh, the treble and the bass clef aren't connected. They are by middle C. Middle C is like the glue that holds everything together. Okay? Make sure you do your best to draw a treble clef. Um, just make it look like a treble clef. It doesn't bother me how it really looks. There are some terms and definitions in the sheet. Another thing, too, is all of your answers are on these assignments if you just read them. Do not just fill them out. Read the instructions because the answers to the questions are there. Okay, that concludes this. Again, tomorrow, I want to go and work with one of you guys and see if you can draw on this PDF, save it, and send it to me. Okay? We're going to work on that tomorrow. Thank you guys very much for your patience. If you have any questions, email me. William Z at pioneer.k12.in.us. See me in class whenever you need to. I'm around. If you need to call me, call the school and they will direct you to where I am. Okay? If you have any questions, don't hesitate to ask. You have a week. Do a little bit every day. So that way, you can just hand this in, turn it in, and be done. Okay? You guys are doing a great job these last two days. I'm very proud of you. Keep getting better than yesterday. All right? Thank you, guys.